Hey guys, our decline here, average picker. So this is part one of a series. I'm gonna document out um, these steps I'm going through into the pick making process. And by the end, this may work out and this may not. Um, but after making this, um, which was mostly done by freehand, I did use a Sharpie uh, to kind of mark it out, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, it just, it didn't work out for me. It, it, this was not a good approach for me. So I decided to do kind of a proof of concept uh, for methoding it out. And maybe, you know, maybe this will work out. Maybe some of this will be helpful to somebody. Maybe it won't. Uh, what I decided to do, though, was uh, to focus more on, I guess, playing to my strengths uh, as opposed to trying to sit down and shape up one of these like I had been doing it for or like I had been doing it for ages, like some people have in <laughs> some of the videos. They make it look so easy. Uh, so before I got into lock picking, I used to do a fair amount of sketching. And I'm going to pause to insert a sketch here so you can see what I kind of did. Okay. Um, and what I had done at one point with those was we had started printing them out as individual pieces and doing the, these kind of flat um, scenery bits where the characters were very flat. They were made mostly out of like tin and aluminum uh, with the flat background scenery. Um, you can see how it would play to that and look kind of neat with a little bit of depth to it. Um, the metal though I was working with in that case was soft and thin enough. You could actually cut it with nail clippers. Uh, that's I did a lot of the shoulder and the hair work um, with fingernail clippers as well as I even used scissors on a few bits uh, and because of all the little lines on them that were going to get painted uh, it needed light scoring so the way I did a lot of those though was basically to print them out and do a template and I decided to print these out and do a template now we know there's a lot of templates online for picks but what I started thinking was another one of my st strengths I say this is someone who's misshapen a lot of picks but I have shaped a lot of picks um, or reshaped, so I guess is a better term. What I decided to do, and you can see this is really, this is in the very, very first rough cut stages and it looks like hell right now. Um, but I decided to kind of borrow a little bit from the blanks that are now get, that, are get, that get sold that have that kind of squared off end. And I decided, let's see if we can produce a good one of these. Can we then produce one over and over again um, and then just shape it into what we need. So this is fresh off of the first round of giving it a cut. So what I started doing is I basically laid out a template, um, traced it out for how I wanted it, uh, cut it out largely with a <laughs> ballpoint pen. Actually, I just kind of went back and forth across the line until it broke. I did use an X-Acto knife on a few bits of it just to free it up. Um, but you can see it just basically produced a template. Then I taped the template down to our feeler gauge. Uh, and now it turns out I used double-sided tape, which I thought was going to be a little icky. Um, and it is a little icky, but it actually turned out pretty well for holding it, especially when quenching. Um, this one here, it did come up in the comments um, to make sure I quench. And this one I did not quench on. I knew I needed to quench, uh, but this was really just a, you know, test case for cutting and to see what would cut. Um, so this one did get quenched a good bit. Now what's going to happen with the tape though is the tape does melt under the cutting so you do get this real ugliness um, but honestly this stuff cleans right up. I mean you can just pretty much, I mean it's just melted tape. You can scrape it right off. Uh, the reason I did it this way instead of using the magic marker though was because as I had done a marker on this one um, but I know just even from my hand moving it around, I was really blurring that line. And me personally, I need a more distinct line. So with this taped down, uh, basically I took the Dremel a bit and I ran it across um, these parts and I made little kind of notch areas where the main cuts would be but I scored straight onto the metal and I wanted to do that so that when it did start looking like this, I would still have this kind of scored shiny area um, that I had tripped up a little bit with the cutting bit. Now I should have probably mentioned this a little bit earlier. So this was one of the original 
cutting bits I was using. This is pretty much the standard Dremel cutting bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, it does cut these picks. The problem was, you can see how worn down that is. Um, it just rips through these things. And what I did not want to do was substitute buying these <laughs> for buying picks. Um, you know, I mean, I guess it would still be cost effective, but I was looking at this and how much I had cut and how much needed to be cut and guesstimating I was probably going to go through a disc pick. Um, so I had moved over and started using one of these. And uh, this works much, much, much better. Uh, it, it does deform a little bit, um, but it definitely, it holds so much better and it gets a nicer cut on there actually as well. So with that all kind of scored, um, then I went in and actually started kind of grinding it, um, still using the disc, but cutting it kind of proper as you would expect to do. And so let's see if we can peel this off. So the double sided tape is still on there pretty good. So that's what we've got, and I know it looks like hell, but like I said, um, this is this is just this is very rough. This is not a whole lot of time was spent on this either for what I was expecting. I was sitting down. Um, I should have made note of the time. I was sitting down expecting it to take much longer than getting to this point did, and then I decided to come in and have some beer and chicken wings. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so I was impressed with that cutting wheel and kind of scoring things out a little bit and then doing the cuts. Um, I got it into something that's going to, you know, gradually work it down. Obviously, the neck's going to get thinned and everything. Uh, I like the idea of templating off those blanks, though, um, especially if I can just turn out a lot of these and have them sitting around. I'm thinking then maybe as I need something, I can come in with an actual grinder um, and polish it down and everything and just shape them almost on an as needed uh, basis. So, and this one was quenched. Now that's with the tape, the tape is nice um, because it does stop it from heating up too much in your hands and feeling it. You should be wearing gloves anyway. Um, but you know, every so often you don't. And you know, be honest, I grabbed it a few times without the glove because I was changing stuff out and just, it's like, yeah, let me just go ahead and do it. Um, but yeah, it worked out pretty nice. Um, so next, you know, we'll come in, we'll do some more precise cutting, um, and then we'll start getting into some actual proper shaping and just narrowing it down and then move into polishing. And I will document those processes out. Um, though there's probably not going to be a whole lot to that, um, to these later parts is going to be terribly unique. Um, Doing this, I thought, was a little bit unique because most of the time what you see is the person lay, you know, might lay a pick down and then they trace it um, with a Sharpie or something. Uh, but for those of us that need a little more distinct line and can't keep it when it starts blurring and smearing off, um, this actually worked out pretty well. I might step up. Um, with the characters, what I had actually done was made uh, some templates out of other harder material. I'd started the map out of paper and then I transferred um, them to a Sculpty. Um, it's sort of like an, a clay you can bake in the oven if you don't know what Sculpty is. And, uh, and then I shaped, did final shapings and stuff on the Sculpty people and I was able to use that um, on the metal. But again, that was much softer metal. Uh, it worked out though pretty well because I could then tell, if, oh, if I'm starting to sand into the Sculpty, you know, you'd start getting those Sculpty flakes and stuff. So I'm wondering maybe if I could do something like that, I could step this up into something a little softer than this. Probably not the Sculpty, um, but something. And uh, have kind of just a thicker, good template to keep using. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, uh, that's where that is at right now. So we will uh, move on to the next stage and see what we get. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good night.